data. We've never had more of it in this world, and that includes the world of pro cycling too. In fact, I think in cycling, data points have increased exponentially. Never before have we known so much about what a Tour de France rider is doing and what they have done previous to now. And much of that comes from a very small data tracking and transmitter device that's located underneath every rider's saddle. This small piece of tech just here transmits all sorts of data, including cadence, the rider's speed, which group they're in, where they are within the group, what the time gaps are within the groups, and it does all of that live. And that device underneath each saddle comes from a company called NTT, who recently acquired Dimension Data, uh, the company, as opposed to the team. Uh, they have been the ones who've been broadcasting live the data throughout the world from the Tour de France since 2015. Now, for fans, that means they've got more information than ever at their fingertips or in their vision. And for NTT, it means they've been collecting an enormous amount of data and they can analyze a race like never before. In fact, through machine learning, and predictive analytics, NTT claim that they can predict with reasonable accuracy the outcome of a stage or of a race. That said, I too feel like with my experience of racing and watching racing that I'm pretty good at predicting the outcome of a race. So I decided to put them to the test. An algorithm versus Lloydy. Who's your money on? Well, I've now arrived at the finish and the zone technique where all the television companies are and where NTT are. I'm about to go meet a couple of their number crunchers. Uh, but in the meantime, this morning I had an interview with Doug Ryder, manager of the Team Dimension Data squad, to ask how those numbers are helping his team. Uh, Doug, we all know just how yeah. important it is to every World Tour team to have as much information as possible about riders, rivals, the course, the wind and everything else. And you, being sponsored by Dimension Data and NTT, must have more than anybody at your disposal. Well, I mean, we, we have a lot of information for sure, and we, we focus in three areas, I guess. But during a Tour de France, we, um, I guess all the teams have the same kind of information for on race day. So, of course, we use the GPS tracking um, to know exactly where our riders are in relation to each other and then the NTT Race Center app where you can plot and find out where your riders are. So that helps with race strategy, absolutely. So if you want to do something significant in a race and I guess like the day before the race day, you know, there was a, a breakaway that happened in the crosswinds and if you don't know where your riders are in relation to each other and you don't use the technology, then um, you're at a disadvantage for sure. And if you do know that, um, you can prepare for eventualities and, and be on strategy. So on race day, we all have the same information, I guess, as teams, but uh, it's some of them use it, I guess, more so than others. And we, of course, use it, you know, every single minute of, of every stage of every race. And what about on the lead up to the race in terms of sort of rider selection or deciding the right rides that are appropriate for a particular course? You've got various apps for that kind of thing too. No, absolutely. I mean, we have um, we have a few applications that we use in that space and uh, which I guess aggregates up into a business intelligence dashboard that I can see, um, you know, you know, I guess even the health and wellness of the of the riders. But I mean, we look at all this information that's sitting in websites today. So it's not like we've recreated and reinvented the wheel. There's all this information is sitting in databases anyway. We've just aggregated it up into information that we feel is relevant to us. So if we're looking for a rider from a recruitment point of view, we we can aggregate you know based on what we're looking for. And then of course. <laughs> putting the right riders in the right races. We look at which riders have done well previously in races in the past, and then we, for our World Tour ranking, we, we put them in the races, and, and it's an interesting conversation that we have with the riders when a rider says, oh, you know, I'd like to do that race. And we're like, why do you want to do that race? Why don't you do the races that you've been good at because you've scored so many points, etc. And and this is your history, and this is why we think you should be in this race. And what's next? What's the next big thing in data within cycling, would you say? Well, I think it's, um, you know, through NTT, and I guess with, you know, organizers like the ASO, I think it's an opportunity to showcase real-time information and uh, you know get the couch coaches at home on the TV screen to make decisions and inform decisions and why things are happening in races and also people on the side of the road you know using mobile phones and, and technology like that so I think real live data power data that kind of stuff you know increasing the fan experience and the viewing experience which would be great for all teams sponsors revenue etc so I think that would be a uh, you know that would be something that will be really unique and, and significant and something that we'd look forward to to seeing and we've arrived. This huge blue truck here in the TV compound is basically where all the magic happens. As you just heard from Doug, all that data is incredibly useful to teams such as Team Dimension Data and their sports directors, etc. Uh, but this part is all about you, giving the fans what you need or what you want in terms of data and seeing where riders are and what might happen, etc. I've set a tour round, but I'm going to bring you in now. Age before beauty. We're in. 
And I'm shortly going to take you upstairs to introduce you to, and speak to, in fact, Tim Wade and Peter Gray, who are real cycling nerds. Not my words, the words written on the wall just behind you. Uh, before I do go upstairs, though, you'll want to know what my prediction for the stage was, won't you? Well, this is stage 11 where we're recording today's video, and as such, it should finish in a bunch sprint. So, I have gone for Dylan Grunewagen for the win, in second place, Elia Viviani, in third, Caleb Ewan, fourth, Peter Sagan, and in fifth place, Jasper Sturven of Trek Segafredo. However, if you look on this screen, you'll see their predictions, and it is... 17% Caleb Ewan, 6% Viviani, 5% to Sagan, 2% Dylan Gruenewegen, and 2% Matteo Trentin. Now, they have pointed out to me that they are never, ever going to be able to 100% predict the winner of each stage. Of course, they're not going to be able to, and that would ruin sport for everybody. What they have achieved, though, is being able to predict it almost as accurately as a journalist or an ex-rider that's been following racing for years. We'll see whether that's true today. Right, let's go upstairs. This is Peter, who's about to show us everything that we can see whilst we're watching a race on a computer screen. But before he does that, he's going to explain how this transmitter takes the data from the bike and gets it onto his computer screen. Yeah, so these are little GPS trackers, and you would have seen these you know, sitting on the back of all of the bikes. So 176 riders started the Tour de France, and they all started with a tracker. A few less riders now. Um, but, um, but basically, this transmits every second of position and speed, and that gets bounced um, via the television motorbikes up to the plane that circulates above the race and then down to the finish line here at the, the tech, uh, Zone Technique where we can pick up that data and we use it for information going into the television broadcast, into the digital channels and into social media as well. And I understand that they can talk to each other on the bikes even if someone's got a problem with beaming it up to that aeroplane. As long as one of them's working, then that's fine. Well, it kind of bounce. Yeah, the signals all bounce, bounce around, and find the best path to uh, to get up to the to the plane. So it's it's pretty clever stuff. And so, at the moment, you've got speed, position, cadence as well. So at the moment, the agreement with the teams just allows us to capture speed and position for the Tour de France. Uh, other races, obviously, you know, you see races where we're um, able to capture power and heart rate and those types of things, but for the Tour de France, it's, it's speed and position. Right, let's have a look at what we can all look at uh, on our computer screens, if we so wish to watch alongside the racing coverage. Uh, no starting worries. Starting with the Race Centre, presumably? Yeah, so, so Race Centre is the official um, live website for the, for the race, for the Tour de France. And you know, on here you can see all the information about the, the groups, the gaps, uh, there's news feeds and you know, little video snippets, pictures, etc. as well as some interesting statistics. So we can see here that the, the gap and the breakaways pretty much stayed stable around that two and a half minute mark for um, the, last, uh, the last 40 kilometres. Yeah, basically they've got no hope Grunewagen's going to take it. Yeah, yeah probably. <laughs> <laughs> or Caleb Ewan. Yeah. Yeah, come on Aussie. Um, and then... Uh, is, is, is that why it's come up as a 16% uh, chance of winning? Uh, Clear favourite. Is no, there some favouritism going on? You, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, and then you can, uh, through the live tracking part of the, uh, the website, you can actually then go and see, you know, the details of individual riders, select your favourite um, uh, your favourite riders, and so you know, I've got Edval Bossenhagen here from Team Dimension Data, and he's uh, sitting in 53rd spot in on the road at the moment. Um, you know, he's travelling at 49 kilometres an hour. So, so if you're a huge fan of Nari Quintana and you hit the mountains, you can just select him and maybe some of his rivals and see where they all are. Exactly, and so you can go in here and can, you can choose by nationality or choose by team or just choose individual riders, pick your favourites and, and follow where they are. Uh, live data commentary through social media. And on so, Twitter, yeah. On I've followed this recently. I'm a bit of a data geek myself. I like a few numbers and I loved this Twitter feed already. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very cool. So we've got a journalist working with a data scientist and putting together you know, different stories. And so you know, at the moment, talking about the, the workload of the, uh, um, you know, who's at the front of the peloton and who's, who's, doing the, uh, who's doing the work there. So we can see Lotto Sedala are, are at the front. So they obviously think Caleb Ewan's yeah. going to win today. Um, yeah, so at the moment, it says Lotto have done 45% of the work, the Koenig Quick Step 40, and Jumbo Visma just under 10%. That's I mean, right. They're not confident. And then, you know, we're starting to experiment with um, a whole range of, um, you know, new ways of, of looking at the race. But this is a, um, an augmented reality app that projects the course in three dimensions onto a table. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, so this is... This is an aug augmented reality application. We can see the uh, see the course there. We can see where um, see where the riders are, 
And you know, on a flat stage like this, it's probably not as exciting, but certainly once we hit the mountains, you can start to get a real feel for yeah. you know, following the, the, the path of the uh, path of the course through and, and see the you know, get a real feel for the geography. So in terms of the prediction, why would you say that the internal computer brain has given Caleb Ewan such a high chance of victory today, given that he's not won a sprint so far? It's taking into account, you know, um, you know, I think we've got about 35 different, you know, features that, that get incorporated into the into the model, and so it's looking at, at form, it's looking at the history of the rider, uh, it's looking at uh, obviously the course, it's looking at the um, the composition of their team, you know, so stronger teams, you know, you tend to find, you know, winning riders tend to come from stronger teams, etc., and so it brings all of those features together, and it's been trained on, you know. Um, five years of historical data to figure out, you know, who are the riders who are most likely. And look, you know, it's not going to be perfect, it's sport. You know, sport's exciting because, you know, we can't predict the outcomes. Um, but it's certainly on par with, uh, with with the people in the know, the you know, journalists and the commentators. Which can be useful because as Peter pointed out to me before we started filming this part, the experts in the city charge an enormous amount to give you tips on stocks and shares, etc. And some betting tips do, in fact, in cycling too. Whereas this is not guaranteed to give you the correct winner each and every stage, but it's going to give you as good an idea as some top experts. That's right. So we've spoken to the team manager, we've spoken to a cycling nerd. Uh, before we get on to the next one, though, let's talk to one of the riders. Here's Ben King. So what apps do you have at your disposal to, to help your own performance now? One of the apps that we use every day is called the Fila app. Uh, we have that through the team, and it's uh, it's kind of a, a wellness app that the team looks at in conjunction with our training files that we upload every day. It gives the coaches and the doctors a sense of where we're at and how hard they can push us on given days. Um, it's a good way to get feedback after races and after training as well, so we update it in the morning about how much rest we got, um, how was the quality of our sleep, um, how was our diet, everything. And how accurate would you say it is? I mean, has there ever been a point where it's told you you're not fit enough to train on a certain day, you've gone out and felt amazing? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely days, um, especially in racing, you don't really have a choice, but uh, in training, you know, if I log in there that I woke up feeling very fatigued and, you know, maybe had a rough night, didn't get much sleep, then I'll get a, a message almost instantaneously from the coach saying, you know, maybe we back off training a little bit today and then the doctor will follow up asking about, uh, you know, if there are any concerns, any symptoms that can be addressed. Right, and finally, uh, I'm pitting myself up against the algorithm machine that Diamond Today and NTT have made that predicts quite accurately, apparently, stage winners and overall winners. So for today, I have gone for Dylan Grunewagen. You're going to make a pick. <laughs> Giacomo needs solo. I thought you might say that. Who's going to come second to Giacomo? Uh, second, I think Gronewagen's a good choice, yeah. I think Caleb Ewan is a big possibility today as well. And uh, so I think my money would be on, on our rider, Giacomo Nizolo, of course, because he's been up there already this tour and I think he's going to be good today. But I th an outside charge could be Gronewagen or Caleb Ewan. Okay, thank you very much. I think he's been talking to his sponsors because that's who they went for, was Caleb Ewan. <laughs> Some of you may recognise this next face because Tim was involved in the 24-hour record attempt, which we did a video on a few weeks ago. His main job, though, is here with NTT. Uh, this is Tim, who's literally just said to me that he gets to do all the nerdy stuff. Right? He's <laughs> going to go through some of that now. Uh, a vastly different looking screen, or screens, uh, what are we looking at here? Yeah, so one of the things, one of the challenges that we have is, you know, the, the people that are looking at Race Centre from all over the world and it's very difficult for us to understand what experience really? they're getting yeah. when they when they you know when they view this so this year we've set up a tool that enables us to understand what that client you know that experience is like for them so we can basically see everyone around the world see all the people that are connecting in and then understand how the data flows through the platform uh, and then you just explaining that on the bottom left there you're working on something very new that they're using in the race cars from ASO yeah so the plan is that, that you know what if, one of the challenges that the, the ASO have is that they you know have limited connectivity through the race. You know, if you look from a telco point of view, you're going to get about 85% coverage across the stages. So, you know, to then push data into a car is very difficult. So we're doing, we, the plan is to use the same data transmission that we have off the back of the, the bikes from the transmitters, right. send the data directly to a car, and then we've created a, an analytics platform and data visualization platform that runs in the car so that they then don't need to have those big pipes of bandwidth coming in to be able to see what's going on. 
That's cool. Yeah. Right, so you've been doing this uh, since Dimension Data first made the contract of ASO to do it, so lots have changed, I'm sure, since then. Yeah. But what do you see as the future? Because as I said, this, this hub here is all about making the fans and the viewers' experience better. What's going to be happening over the next year or two? Yeah, I think, you know, we've, we've, we've focused on the viewing experience for, for the last five years, and I think now we're, we're looking at the fan experience and how we can bring data and the elements to the to people at the side of the road. So one of the things that we've got here this year is, is in the hospitality area. Is we have a data dashboard that so people can see what's going on and they get that you know more enhanced view. Just before we exit the big data bus, I want to show you this because it's a bit of a glimpse as to what you might be able to expect to see yourselves in the not too distant future. At the moment, it's only reserved for the truck here and also NTT's VIP area closer to the finish line. Uh, but as they've got it set up at the moment, you can see the leaders of all of the classifications on the screen. But now, well in Sagan and Alaphilippe, uh, their positions within the race. Alaphilippe's having to move up because he's currently in the 149th position. Exactly how far they are behind the leader and their exact speed too. He's going a little bit faster. I think he must have just stopped for a comfort break and he's making his way back to the front of the peloton. Right, uh, all that leaves me to say really is a huge thank you to everyone at NTT uh, for allowing us access behind the scenes to see how it all works and how it works with the teams and with the riders too. And I have to say, from a personal point of view, being a little bit of a numbers and stats geek, I love the extra data that you can get from races these days to accompany the pictures that you're seeing on your screen. And I'm also very excited to see where those data points and stats are going to go in the future, because I think they've got some really big plans. Now, I'm very excited though to see who wins the stage. If I can beat the big computer brain, I'm off to the finish line to see. You in one. I can't believe it, I've beaten by a computer. I mean, to be fair, I did get the top three exactly right. They were just in the wrong order, which they didn't manage to do. Interesting, though, I didn't expect Caleb Ewan to win, hence why I picked Dylan Gruenewagen. However, they will never, ever, as they've admitted, be able to fully predict stage winners, which is not what we'd want anyway. Otherwise, there'd be no point in watching the stage or indeed the race. Luck is always going to play its part in the world of cycling. We saw that today, actually, with the pick of Ben King and Doug Ryder. Giacomo Nizzolo of Team Dimension Data unfortunately crashing with around 30 kilometers to go and not playing any part in the final sprint. It's been a really interesting day though, uh, and I'm looking forward, as I said earlier, to seeing what they come up with in future in terms of their data, so stay tuned for that. Now, if you like your racing just as much as I do, make sure to subscribe to GCN Racing, our new YouTube channel dedicated to pro cycling. On the other hand, if you really like your tech and you want to see what Dimension Data are riding, we've got a closer look at one of their BMC machines down here.